So, hello and welcome back to another video. Um, right now, we are record we're going to be uh, recording some stuff, especially for... Uh, there you go. Um, we're going to be recording three replays before the update. So, I'll have to tone down the volume of the game. Okay. So, three replays. The AMX30V, the... I think this is the one on Yamato Harbor, which was yesterday, if I recall. Uh, so I'll have to fix that later. We'll, we'll take a look at this first. I think this is the one where we did... Yes, this is the match. <clears throat> From yesterday's video. Yep, it is definitely the match of yesterday's video. Okay, um... All right, we'll avoid that. We'll record the VK100, which is a draw, unfortunately, because one, my stupid play, and two, mm, wasn't paying attention well. But well, we'll see. Now, to make it more interesting, I saw that over there, down there, there was an option to have free cam, so I'll use that instead this time. You know, as an experiment. How do you this how do you use this recap? Oh, there you go. Okay, this is interesting. I think I'd rather ch use that. <clears throat> so yeah. Um we're pushing up here in the VK one hundred. Which I rarely do play, but I quite enjoy a lot. It doesn't take a shot at me, luckily. Oh no, he actually did, but he missed. And so there you go. Now this SU thinks he's smart, but that happens to him. Sometimes this gun is half accurate, half not accurate. I don't know why, but it's such a good tank. E even though it's slow, it's actually very good. And I can see why. I mean, it's a very, it's very interesting to play. I'm gonna have to be a patient person to play this tank. Yeah, we're just chilling here, waiting for some targets to appear. And then the LTTV pops up yet again. I low roll. Which is going to be something that's going to, you know, change the course of this match later. But you know, I attempt to shoot the SU-152 and I hit his gun mantlet because I can't I could not see the orientation. That guy gets shot, he decides to run, run back, but little does he know, this gun is part accurate, so yeah, that happened, <clears throat> and now the SU-152 is out of the game, along with the LTCB, and now we are gunning for the Predator, which is currently on sale as of the this video, which, you know, I'd rather not buy non-realistic tanks. Tanks that I consider are realistic or at least something like the Dracula, which is based off of a real tank. But the Valkyria tanks are cool, but I'd rather not. So I go for the Predator. I go low and hit his tracks. And now we are on a 4 on 4. Of course, the SU-152 is pissed as hell. I decide, hey, why not again? Thread the needle. Hit him for 501. Which is a nice roll. Very nice roll. And we see that there are two tanks behind us. A 
Let's see, an IS-2 Berlin and the ISU-152 currently being manhandled by one of our tank destroyers. And I am panicking. I don't know why I'm panicking, but yes, I am panicking. And so we have the VK-100 and we have the Predator down there. Now the ISU gets taken out by the Ori, but then the Ori will be get taken out by the IS-2 suit. Now it's 2 on 3. Now we have the Vulcan. Who unfortunately is being harassed by both of these guys. So I decide to push and unfortunately that was a bounce. I don't know why our Vulcan decided to push there, but yeah, he did. Unfortunately. But that was a stupid move on his part. We do still have a shooter Emil, which unfortunately, well, we'll see what happens to him later. Um, he's not the brightest of players, so unfortunately he gets taken out by the IS, not yet, but he gets taken out by the IS Berlin. I take out the, the Predator, and now it's a one-on-one, -on -one, both full health, and unfortunately this guy I don't think knows where to shoot. Neither do I, because I miss my shot. He shoots my turret, doesn't pen, I try and run away, which I think is a completely bad play done by me here, as I could've just face-hugged him and, you know, could've done something about it. Luckily though, he bounces my side armor and I run away. And over here, I'm just waiting for him to appear here so I can shoot him. Though unfortunately, that was enough. So I decide to run. I see that he's hitting over there. Pull back a bit, take a snapshot, hit his rear, and damage him a bit. Now, I'm gonna climb up here and try and trick him into thinking, hey, he's probably running. But now that I'm unspotted, I'm heading straight there. And, well, I suppose he's trying to um, one-up me, but you know, this is a VK-100. And now I get shocked that he's over there. And now we're gonna try and ring around the Rosie as well. Unfortunately, bad play by me, causing me to get hit this one time. Which honestly, I didn't mind because I needed to be able to damage him. But of course, again, no gun depression. And if I dropped down, I would have died. I snap my shot and miss. I bounce his uh, shot as well. Unfortunately, this wasn't the best of matches that I've had. So, yeah, we're gonna stall. Then I decide, you know what? There's no time. There's only one way to do this. That's to shoot him, obviously. Uh, with a 15 second reload, I would need to be able to damage him. There you go. And I get a high roll. And you'll see. Yes, like the SU-152 said, it's going to be a draw, unfortunately. As I come around, I shoot him and I low roll. Because this game just doesn't like me. Luck was not on my side and I low rolled and that was an unfortunate mastery badge. Not the best of matches and I didn't really like it either. That was a horrible play, and yeah. A lot of things I could have done better, but I didn't. Now, there's another one over here, which is quite an interesting match as well. Which is just as long, and this time is in the Object 268. So yeah, now, not one of my, not my favorite map. Really, not one of my favorites, but... It's quite nice when it comes to tank destroyers. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna try and gather speed and climb up here. There's a tree that fell down far ahead, which shows one of the tanks heading into the near the cap point. So for the first minute or so, 
We're gonna be camping here. We're gonna do, do nothing. Have an uneventful match. Now the crown wagon appears and I deliberate on whether I shoot one of my heat rounds or not. Unfortunately that was red enough for it to bounce as the shell went into the gunman lid. Next on though, I decide to camp even more while waiting for God knows what to happen. So yes, it's an uneventful one minute and 30 seconds. Okay, and then, you know, an uneventful two minutes, two and a half minutes, and <laughs> the Ori is unimpressed, and so, there, my first target. Unfortunately, he pulls back before I could land a shot, but, you know, to be expected, he's gonna pop up again, gonna land a hit, 7-Eleven, and then there are two enemy tanks behind there. Now, using the bush trick, of course, I'm not going to get spotted because I'm not in direct line of sight and I'm behind the bush. Knowing that both the Vickers and the 50B do not have armor on their turrets, for the most part, I go for the 50B, which is the easier target, as it's not moving around like the Vickers light. Now, we're going to wait for another reload. I'm going to wait for a shot on the Vickers, but unfortunately, he doesn't pull back. So, yes, we land a shot on him. And now we're just going to wait and wait and wait. Because the AMX 50B is going to be taken out soon by me. He lifts his gun up as he knows that he's going to die soon. And now it's just the Fosh and the Vickers that are in a tough position. Now that Fosh is as good as dead. And then the Vickers trying to run away. I land a lead shot on him. As the Ori, the enemy Ori, takes out our 113. Now I'm deliberating whether I should keep on going or not, and then I decide to look at the Nidog, which gets unspotted. But then, after a few seconds, I hear a ping, and that's where the T57 Heavy appears. So then I reverse, take a shot at him, and boom! I low roll, as usual. Or at least, I, yeah, I didn't get a good shot on him, so I got a 696, now leaving him, leaving him with 15 HP. But you know, I don't think he'd move that much, so I clearly know where he is. Shoot, take him out with a high explosive round, and now it's just the Hori and the Kranwagen. Now I only have two minutes, around two minutes left on the match, and I'm starting to think, well, I guess after the Hori got mad, I think there's only one way to do this, and... You know, it's to start moving. So then I turn and I get moving. And I'm making my way over to where the T-57 uh, died. So I could get a clear shot at at least one of the two guys over there. So nothing happens while we're traveling. Of course, the 113 knows that they, we don't have enough time. But the only way is just to push, as Chieftain just said. 
push. So here we are pushing and the crown wagon is spotted and it takes out our chieftain unfortunately. Um, so the Jagdpanzer thinks that we should cap the base but luckily Luckily, the crown, the enemy crown is occupied, and I get a max roll on the enemy crown. Now, the Ori um, just landed a thousand hit point shot on the crown wagon. I try, I try to land HE, but unfortunately, I get a bit impatient and I shoot, hit his gun, and I don't do as much damage. I only deal 400 damage. He takes a shot at me, deals 500. Which I suppose is the standard roll, I think, not a high roll. And we all decide to push forward, to which that guy is as good as dead, I would say. Got shot once, another time, and then while he's on the reload, he got shot by the Crown Wagon, and we win the match. 4,000 damage, and not much, really. But, I get another sniper tank. So. Again, thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like and sub, and I'll see you guys in the next one.